Hi there, this is Brent Harris, Productivity Coach, and what I do is I show people how to attain um, consistent, sustainable, high-level productivity, uh, doing that by cultivating self-control, self-respect, and by moving deeply into the flow state. Um, so if you see my other videos, you'll see that I talk tons and tons about them. And, uh, and the big piece, the most important piece is that um, I, I'm deeply convinced, I hold this deep conviction that all of us have gifts significant important gifts to offer to the world uh, in many many different forms and now more than ever it's very important that we are able to cultivate and create and produce and offer these gifts um, that that all of us play an important role and in that we are very much in demand more in demand than you might even suspect um, this is something that I, I, I continuously find to be true over time so in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk about the actualization of our potential. So you, me, all of us, we sense that there is potential in us, things that we could make, things that we could do, things that we could become. Uh, generally, this comes to us in the form of a vision of like our, our next level selves, like playing at a higher level and just kind of playing a bigger game. That's something that we all feel like is in us and something that we're capable of doing. Um, and yet most people that I talk to, we don't get the sense that we are operating at our highest potential. We always feel like we're doing kind of a smaller version of what we could be doing. And, and then the whole game is about how can we get there? How can we start, you know, doing this higher level stuff and kind of accomplishing our deeper potential in life? And so this is something we want to do. We can run into trouble because we can often have a lot of limiting beliefs that hold us back. Uh, beliefs such as like, uh, I'm not good enough, I suck, I'm lazy, I'm unmotivated, um, I always fail, I am a failure, I'm a fuck up. These would be examples of beliefs that we sincerely believe about ourselves and that because we believe them, we stop ourselves from, uh, like they prevent us from actually stepping into the fullness of our potential. And, um, and so these would be examples of blockages. And so there's one element that I want to introduce here. Like there's one topic that I want to speak on that is a more invisible and yet very popular blockage to us actualizing our potential. And it's our sense of urgency. It is our sense of impatience towards creating results in our life. And so that's what I want to speak to. And so in this whole video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to cultivate what we can call infinite patience. And that if we can do that, it is somewhat paradoxically the most expedited way to actualize our highest potential. So in other words, by cultivating this, this quality of infinite patience, by doing that, we are moving in the quickest possible way to our fullest manifestation of our potential. So that's what the video is about. So in order to, so in order to illustrate this, I'm going to offer uh, two um, kind of old school fables that we can use as images as we go into this lesson that will just kind of illustrate it. First one is the tortoise and the hare. Um, I will assume that you already know this story. It's a very famous story, especially in the West. It's basically about um, uh, tortoise and hare. Like they, they challenge each other to a race uh, for matters of ego, pride. You know, I'm the fastest. And the tortoise is like, no, I'm the fastest. And then they, they set off on a race. The whole forest is watching. Uh, the, the rabbit or the hare, I guess, you know, kind of bursts ahead. And then, you know, gets so far ahead. He, you know, he says, okay, I'm just going to chill out and relax here. And uh, then he falls asleep and he sleeps too long. And then the tortoise kind of plods ahead and makes it to the finish line. And, and the tortoise wins. Um, and then like that, you know, the, the moral is slow and steady wins the race. Uh, the second one is of um, an old man and a young man who are out in the woods and they're chopping down a tree and they're racing to chop down a tree. And, uh, and so the, the younger man is just kind of like whacking away and like, you know, doing a, as good a job as he can, just like really, really giving her a chop and chop and chop in the tree. And the old man, like the, the young man observes, the old man is like chopping, but then like taking breaks and then chopping and taking breaks. And the young man's like, yo, I yeah, totally got this. And the old man eventually is able to knock his tree over first. And when asked how he did it, the old man responded, well, it's because I took time to actually sharpen my saw. And uh, that is actually the, uh, the, the central parable in Stephen Covey's uh, seventh habit out of the uh, seven habits of highly effective people. Um, the seventh habit being 
um, to sharpen the saw, to, to take time to renew. So, so I'm actually going to move in a slightly different direction with these two parables, but they're, they're very important to kind of set the stage. And, um, and so what I want to draw attention to here is that when we feel impatient about our lives and when we feel a sense of urgency about our lives, then what happens is we are moving in a way that is out of whack. It's out of balance. So suppose you are overweight and you want to lose weight. What's very common is for people to suddenly go, holy shit, I want to lose all this weight right now. What is the fastest and best way to lose weight? And so then they'll go look online. It's like you can diet and just eat nothing, drink nothing but water, eat nothing but celery for 30 days or maybe even less and, and you'll lose all this weight. And it's like, you know, hot damn. Okay, that is the fastest way and they go for it. But then what happens is because, because they shift from like fourth gear to fifth gear so fast and they're in such a hurry they will what will typically what will almost always happen in every single case is that we will have like you know two or three or four days where it's like you know great behavior nothing but water and celery and then eventually what happens right you you fall off the wagon like it just it uh it's you know uh, you know we give in you know the diet falls apart and then not only that but we'll typically swing really far in the other direction we'll just like binge out on junk food or whatever and then that will you know then we will erase our progress and end up right back where we started so so why did this happen well it happened because we we were impatient and we were overly urgent and we were trying to you know create the results right now and because and because we were operating from this place of my situation is not okay, my body is not okay, my situation is unacceptable, I need to get away from my situation right now, because that was the place that we were operating from. We we our our whole operation was forward heavy. We were leaning forward. Like if you imagine, say, uh, riding a unicycle and you're like kind of, you know, you're riding a unicycle, but you're like a little bit forward balance and you need to speed up in order to correct yourself. But then, but then you're going even faster and then you, and then you would fall forward and you just kind of eventually fall over. What's ironic is that when we try to go fast, when we have a forward heavy momentum, when we, in other words, when we are just reaching too far forward in order to get what we're after and we're doing it because we're just like, you know, our situation now, like as it is now, it's just, just not okay. When we're doing that, we end up falling on our face and we end up erasing our progress and then we end up back where we started in almost every case. And so it's ironic how we were originally going so fast, but in the end, the time was wasted because of how fast we were trying to go. And so this is the deeper meaning behind slow and steady wins the race, you know, or, you know, you need to take time to sharpen the saw. The, uh, the deeper wisdom here is that we go fast by going slow. The more patience we cultivate, the quicker we can reach our destination. So um, I have some notes here. I'm just checking. So yeah, so like forward or uh, you know you, you have you can have like the 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 uh, over the the forward heavy momentum. Um, also, the same applies when it's backward heavy. When like you're you're trying, we're in. What will happen is we will go in patterns of leaning forward, really trying really hard, and then, you know, we'll fail, we'll give up, and we'll feel so dismayed that we'll just give up and go back the other way. And and then we will be sort of, we'll be in this place for a little while where we're being pulled by life, we're being dragged around by life, we're being forced by life. And, and our, our primary mode will be like, oh, I don't want to, don't make me, oh, you know, going to work or going to different things, taking care of your responsibilities. It'll be the sense of like, like reluctance that you carry around with you. So it's, it's a constant going back and forth between like super aggressive and super reluctant uh, pulling back like that. So um, yeah, so in, so when we, when we are in, when we're not in balance, when there's an imbalance in our attempts to move forward, 
our attempts are time bound. It means that time is against us. It means that our diet of water and celery, it like, as time goes on, as time goes on, there, we are increasingly less likely to actually reach where we're going. Like there will be a point in time when the whole thing falls apart. That's what it means by time bound. Um, so therefore the invitation behind this video is to move into that balance. And so we do that by cultivating infinite patience. So I want to qualify what I mean, what I mean by infinite patience. Infinite patience is not what a lot of us think it is, where it's like, suppose you want to lose weight or you want to grow a garden or you want to uh, create a habit or say you want to learn a language or something and you're practicing learning a language every single day and you just kind of want to get to this point where you're finally fluent with the language. When you are, um, when you're not patient there's a constant urgency in all of your attempts to get to the finish line. And when we're in this place of urgency, what we think of as patience is kind of like our holding our breath where it's like, uh, just waiting and waiting to get there and like almost trying to be patient, you know, trying to make a show of like, you know, not being too urgent, but really inside we're like super impatient, super wanting to reach, super wanting to get there. Infinite patience. That's not what infinite patience is. Infinite patience is when we arrive in a mental place where we're willing to say, I allow this to take as long as it needs to take. I asked in an earlier video, what can be done to expedite the growth of a plant, say like a, you know, an ear of corn? Like what can you do to most quickly grow corn, to grow in the fastest possible period of time? It's weird because there is something that you can do. For example, like you can grow it skillfully, you can water it at the right times, you can cultivate it, give it fertilizer, um, pesticides, you know, whatever is needed to create the optimal conditions for the corn to grow. But then after a certain point, it's going to take as long as it needs to take. And any further attempts to expedite, so in other words, any further attempts to like make it grow even quicker, say by like, you know, you know, you know, pulling on the plant yourself, you know, to make it kind of grow upward, it would only damage the plant. It would actually only counteract your process or your progress. So, so the best thing that you can do in order to make the corn grow at the quickest possible way is by allowing it to take as long as it needs to take. And by being willing to wait for as long as you have to wait. And so it's this type of thing that like from an ego perspective, we really don't want to hear because, because, you know, by definition, when we, when we're in an ego mode, it's like, I want the thing now. It's like, I want it now. Don't make me wait. There's kind of like a child consciousness in there. It's like, ah, don't make me wait. So, so, if it is your desire to move towards the manifestation of your potential in the quickest possible way, let's start here. Would you be willing to cultivate infinite patience? And so I would invite you to really decide that yes or no right now. And if the answer is yes, you know, would you be willing to allow what you're doing to take as long as it needs to take? Would you be willing to assign yourself the correct amount of work to do every single day so that you so that when you show up that day you are you give the full you give your full effort right you show up you do your work you get it done but and by the end of the day you're tired but you're not exhausted and you've expended just enough energy over the course of the day that when you sleep and then wake up into the next morning you have fresh energy and enthusiasm for this day. Can you see how the operation is out of balance if, you, if you're working so hard every single day that you're getting progressively more tired every single day? That's that forward leaning momentum once again. It's time bound in the sense that time is against it. You know, eventually at some point in time, the whole operation will collapse. And the idea here is that we wanna make some kind of an operation that doesn't collapse that actually endures 
and you want to get into a certain groove with it. And, and the flow state becomes very big here. You want to get into flow with what you're doing so that the operation, like on a day by day basis, it's, you know, it's sustainable, it's renewable on a week, weekly basis, the same thing, monthly basis, you know, your um, everything is in balance. When you have that, even though you're not doing as much every day as you really kind of think you could be doing or should be doing, even if you're not doing that, you have a balanced thing that now you can improve. Now you can tweak and see if you can make better and then get a you know 10% more productivity out of your day every day and then 10% more and then 10% more. And that, that is real productivity, real sustainable high level productivity. That's the nut. So, um, yeah, so, so in other words, yes, yeah, so go quickly by slowing down, uh, releasing urgency, releasing impatience, really affirming. We'll do a little bit more of this later, but it's like really arriving at this place. If you're ready to, it's a mature place. This is a grown up mentality to be in. It's like, it takes as long as it takes. It'll take as long as it needs to take. I'm not going to make demands on my crops to yield fruit any sooner than they're ready to. Because, because if, if we're coming at this with a place, from a place of impatience and urgency, what we're really communicating is that we're dissatisfied with our situation as it is, that we're unaccepting of the now, like we're, we're at odds, we are enemies with the now, we're literally trying to escape the now. And what could be crazier than that, right? Especially seeing as the, the, the now is the only reality that there is. There's, there's just this now. Future and past, like if you think about future and past, that is a mental phenomena that you would access in the now. There's only the now. So if you're in this place where you're trying to get out of the now, like that is only a recipe for sorrow. Is it not so? So a movement out of this urgency and patience is a, is a real deep movement into the now. And it's weird because like we're already into the now, but it's like it's like moving moving our consciousness into the now, moving our bringing our awareness into the now, slowing down, slowing down. I find it's really interesting, and I believe you'll be blown away if you just kind of play with this idea on your own too. What think about like like any particular thing that you're trying to get to the other end of, like something that you just you're always trying to rush through, you're always trying to get to the other side of. What is that for you? For a lot of people, it's like brushing your teeth. You know, who, you know, some people like brushing their teeth, but for a lot of people, it's just kind of like a hassle. It's just something, you, you know, you brush your teeth and you just kind of like zone out and you just, you know, wait to be done, right? Me too. Or, or it was so. But then what I found is that, particularly when it comes to flossing, I, um, I started slowing down flossing. I became totally aware of how much I'm always rushing through, always trying to just get done with flossing my teeth. And what I did was I just started slowing down and tuning into the process of flossing. And then what I noticed is that like if I'm flossing, right, if I pull the, uh, the string against my tooth, I can, actually, I can actually notice how much plaque is coming off. It's really cool. Like I, I, I looked it up. It's like there's a, a squeak that you get when you, like, you keep flossing and then you kind of hit like your actual tooth. You move through the plaque and you get to the tooth. There's a squeak. And, and it means, you know, if my reading is correct, you know, do your own research, but you know, it means that the plaque is gone. And so now it's like, there's a, there's feedback in my flossing. I can see like, you know, my, my progress meter in terms of, you know, um, when I'm done flossing, like there's actual feedback to track. And so now, now flossing is interesting. Now I can actually learn how to take good care of my teeth. And you can just imagine, imagine one person who like every single day, they just try to get through flossing. They're, they're mentally absent. They're just trying to get through. And then somebody over here who's actually in flow while they're flossing. They're not urgent. They're actually enjoying themselves while they're flossing. Who's going to have the better teeth after a year or five years? Interesting, right? So... Um, same with playing the piano. I find that like, if I'm like working on some kind of a piece, whether it's like I'm learning to play some, something that I've heard or I'm making my own music, 
there will be some parts that like I just can't quite get. And it's like when I slow down, those parts open and new lessons and new level of ability are revealed to me when I'm willing to slow down at the confusing, difficult parts. Um, yeah, yeah. So that so there's sort of like a, a, a deeper esoteric lesson embedded in the practical lesson of, you know, stop being so urgent, stop, you know, stop, you know, trying to rush through things. The, the esoteric truth is that the more you, t the slower you go, the more you create a window for creativity and wisdom to be channeled through. It's like, it's like a little portal opens up when you're really focused on that one activity and new flow can come in. And your whole life can just become an increasingly deeper exploration of flow as you get good at moving at increasingly minute details. That's where the mastery and like the genius comes in. So that's the lesson. Actually, that, that is what I came here to say. So um, what I want to do is I want to leave you with something that you can actually work with, something that you can actually try in your own life. And so it's this. I would like for you to think of a single endeavor uh, in your life that you want to, that you've been struggling with for the last little while and that you just wish, and that you've been struggling with for a long time maybe, and perhaps you're currently attempting to change it, like you're maybe growing a, a business, say, or you're working on your schoolwork or something. Um, or maybe, or maybe you're in a, a backward pulling phase where, you know, you're in, you're kind of, um, you've, you've failed and you're kind of like licking your wounds maybe. So whatever that is, look at that topic and look at the result that you're after. And I want to challenge you to arrive at a place where you are willing for this to take as long as it takes. And if you really want to do this, if you really want to make this happen, then arrive in a place where you have decided that you are willing to wait forever. You can even try it out loud. You can just say, I'm willing to wait forever. I'm willing to wait eternally for this. I'm willing to wait for as long as it takes. That is infinite patience. A balanced, stable waiting. A waiting that's not reaching. A waiting where you are, if you remember my earlier video, operating from the center of your being, sitting in your center and allowing it to come to you and allowing it to take as long as it needs to take. It'll come when it comes. And also, just as deep, I don't need, so what, whatever the thing is, like to lose weight, get money, whatever, I don't need to lose weight. I don't need to get money. Just try saying that out loud. Notice how it feels in your body to say that. I don't need money. I don't need high grades. I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't, there's, um, there's nothing I need. There's nothing that I need. Try saying it, feel into it. If it feels lighter, it means it's true. So there's nothing that I need. And, and hammer on these phrases. Like if you really wanna move into this lesson and make this lesson come alive in your own life, say these things. I don't need, I'm not, you know, I'm willing to wait. I allow this to take as long as it needs to take. You know, I, I abide in the center. Say these and notice, like, if you keep feeling better every time you say it, then keep saying it. Because what it, it, what it'll show you is that it'll show you that you don't need to be attached to any outcome. It'll show you how to release your attachment to the outcomes of your efforts. And it's when you're in this place where you're able to just offer effort and do your best. Do your best, right? Full effort, full intelligence, full strategy, everything. Like, do your best. But then after that moment, you fully release that is how you find that deep stability within yourself. And it's just how we tend to get the quickest results in the most expedited way. And that is the quickest way to move along to your highest potential. Cultivate infinite patience. It takes as long as it needs to take. And that's all I got for you. Lovely. So announcements, my $5 sessions are still open. I have a link below. I'm pointing down to the description box there. Um, you can get a full coaching session with me, 45 minutes, private, live, five Canadian dollars. Uh, give me a chance to really talk to you and look at your situation. Uh, you know, if this feels like something you want to do, you are definitely the person I want to talk to. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. 
Um, and then, and then the other thing is that I have, if you want to like, if you really want to take your productivity, like, you know, in a place, if you want to really plug the holes in your boat and, and get your shit in gear, then I suggest heading over to brentheris.com and downloading my free PDF reader, the five point productivity first aid kit. Um, it'll just like cut out all the major mistakes, all the 80% of the loss. And you'll just over the next few days, you'll find yourself like way sharper and way more productive. And that's all I got for you. Lovely to hang out with you. Thank you for subscribing. Please hit the like button and I'll talk to you soon.